Beep, 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 beep. Hello. Just from the day news. <laughs> It's turning into that, isn't it? Just a midday news. What have I got for you now? Right, okay. <sighs> Come on, folks. Buy me a coffee. Do you know, support me in some way. Become a warrior teacher. Join me sub stack. Do something. Because I want to do this stuff full time. And that way I can do like three broadcasts a day. Wouldn't that be fab? And some live ones. That's what I'm hoping to be able to do. I want to move, I want to move this forward. So that we can keep the conversation going and keep having the debates. Okay, so I've got a beauty for you here now. Which has come from the, uh, the Times. Bless it. The Times. The grumpy old uncle. <laughs> the Times. Oh, I am a grumpy person. <laughs> grumpy person. So we got here, right? Unbelievable. Saturday, April the 1st. This was, right? Okay, it's written by Ali... Let me just get the name right. Ali Matib. Ali Matib. Right, okay. Thank you, Ali, for this. Right, so we've got here... Um, one of the agencies providing sex education material to schools has allegedly contacted a transgender teenager without the consent of their parents, it has been claimed after the organisation was named in a report by a think tank. Now, a couple of things about that first paragraph. There's no such thing as a transgender teenager. OK, so let's get rid of that first. There are only people in distress. OK. It has been claimed after a report, blah, blah, blah. Didn't talk to parents. Right. The mother of a 15-year-old teenager has raised concerns about the proud trust. Remember them? Dice game, fingers, bums, noses, fannies, all that stuff, right? The mother of a 15 year old teenager is really concerned about the proud trust after it emerged that an adult worker from the charity approached her child to offer transition support without her knowledge. Transition support. So, so they're selling this now. Hello, would you like to transition from the proud trust? The very notion that a child says that they're trans is a safeguarding issue. When are you going to get your head around this, folks? Well, I know you lot have, but when's everybody else going to get their head around it? it? means they've got some kind of dysmorphia, which means that there's a problem there. Hello, can I help you? Would you like to be anorexic? Hello, can I help you? Would you like to self-harm? Right? Same thing, okay? It's not an identity. It's a mental condition. Why is that so difficult for people to understand? You know? Why is that so people for different to understand? The woman who lives in the northwest of England asked to remain anonymous said her teenager had started identifying as transgender during the pandemic. Yeah, she's not the only one. About a year ago, the child admitted drinking alcohol to school staff. The school contacted the mother and asked if they could refer the people to a charity that offers support for those taking drugs and drinking. She agreed and was contacted by the charity, who also sought her permission before contacting the child. The support ended after a few sessions after the teenager, teenager said everything was OK. 15-year-old gets drunk, mental really? <sighs> Right, OK, the support ended, blah, blah, blah. But about a month later, the mother came across an email on her child's laptop from a one-to-one -one worker at the Proud Trust. The worker told the teenager they had been trying to reach you via phone and text after their details were passed on by the Substance Abuse Support Service. So they're, they're trading children now. That sounds dreadful, doesn't it? They're not really. But that's what it seems to be, doesn't it? They're trading. I've got one. Send it on. They're not doing that. But that's what it feels like, doesn't it? Um, after their details were passed on by the Substance Abuse Support Service, who the worker had said, who the worker said had let me know you let me know that you may be looking for support around gender and transition. So they let the worker know that they may be looking for some support. Maybe. God Almighty! I mean, look, we've got to remember the harm is iatrogenic. You know, it starts the minute you start talking about it. The mother said she was upset that she'd not been consulted about an adult con contacting her child. She said she complained to the Proud Trust, but not her back. The Proud Trust has been contacted for comment. What a bloody surprise. The concerns over parental consent come on the back of the report by Policy Exchange that was released earlier this week. I've mentioned this report before. After surveying a number of schools, it emerged that they were often turning to agencies to help them produce learning materials. The agencies most frequently named were the Proud Trust, the Rainbow Flag Award, Just Like Us, and Diversity Role Modelled. Right? Among the organisation's resources, the Proud Trust, advice states that people usually become aware of gender from the age of three or four, adding that there is no age limit for taking steps such as using different pronouns. 
These are a dangerous organisation. The charity based in Manchester has received almost three million in public money over the past five years. Since 2021, its chief executive has been Lisa Harvey Nebel, who has previously worked as an arrest referral worker at Blackburn Police Station and in youth services at various local councils. She also spent three years at the Prince's Trust charity. Harvey Nebel recently tweeted about challenging a Specsaver branch in Blackburn over their assumption of pronouns, adding, training completed and this week was asked for pronouns. Fantastic response. They're setting their guff, aren't they? Fantastic response. As well as delivering training and resources to schools, the Proud Trust provides online and one-to-one support. The charity separately offers a mentoring programme that links young people with adults who identify as LGBT. You don't identify as LGB. You are it or you aren't. And have undergone their training. Prospective mentors are DPS checked and while anyone with certain convictions such as offences against children or vulnerable people will be blocked. Among other offences, the charity's website says that disclosure of a conviction does not automatically debar someone from consideration. That's standard stuff. Don't get taken in by that problem, right? If somebody did some shoplifting when they were 19 because they were hungry, you wouldn't stop them from getting a job. So don't be caught by that problem. Um, Very few of the resources from the, the agency are available. Then you've got the Rainbow Flag Award, which only costs schools... £795 if they're a primary school, £999 for a secondary school, and £1,295 for an independent school. Uh, the resources that help cheap teachers incorporate LGBT plus themes across the whole curriculum. There's the template again, you see, being laid across. The template being laid across everything this parasitical belief system gets, gets anywhere near. But a former chair of governors at one school that introduced the award scheme under the Proud Trust voiced concerns that some of the teaching was helping to reinforce gender stereotypes. Um, you know, it's all about boys being can be princesses and girls can be astronauts. Um, although not all resources are available online, the award scheme website states that many parents and, and carers themselves have often not received any LGBT plus positive education. And that is subsequently a requirement for lessons, resources, information and learning to be shared with them by schools. Um, so, you know, that's all that nonsense again under the Proud Trust, this rainbow, uh, rainbow gubbins, the rainbow flag award nonsense. And then we have diversity role models. Meanwhile, a sex education agency recommended a book that contained a first-person account of a six-year-old child performing an oral sex act. Diversity Role Models, a government-funded LGBT charity that provides workshops and resources to schools, recommended the book during a partnership with Asda, the supermarket chain, to mark Pride Month in 2020. I remember this because I went to Asda and had a chat with the boss. Hmm. <laughs> Soon went, didn't it? That wasn't me, by the way. That was other people that did that. I just went in retrospectively. As part of the partnership, which included a £100,000 donation... <laughs> The corporate bastards. The charity put together a home learning pack for children in which it recommended Beyond Magenta, Transgender Teens Speak Out, a book based on interviews with six transgender or gender neutral young people. The book, which was written by Susan Cucklin, an American author, included the following from an interviewee. From six up, I used to kiss other guys in my neighbourhood, make out with them and perform oral sex on them. Asda. In schools. Just Like Us is another one that's in the article, another agency. Um, it helps schools set up pride groups. You know, this affinity group stuff, which is all bloody nonsense. That charity was founded by Tim Ramsey, who works for the Behavioural Insight Team, a UK-based organisation that applies behavioural insights to inform policy and improve public services. The team, known unofficially as the Nudge Unit, was set up in 2010 within the UK Cabinet Office to apply nudge theory within government. There you go. There's your behaviourist orientation. You'll remember, I've discussed it with you before, the humanist orientation. Go, go, go and look around the zoo, the behaviourist orientation. Pavlov's dogs, my warrior teachers will be very familiar with this idea and where it's come from. Um, the charity has received a number of corporate donations. Facebook, JP Morgan, Daily Telegraph. In 2021, it had an income of almost 564000 um, As agencies providing sex and relationship education charge schools for their services, only limited resources are generally shared on their websites. Um, you've got businesses, which is what they are. They can, they can couch themselves as being charities. I don't believe it. They're businesses. And what they're doing is preying on children. They're preying, on, they're preying on children in terms of children who are vulnerable to this kind of atrogenic, cultish thinking. They're preying on teachers who are vulnerable because they're lefties or liberals who think that the world's a nice place and everybody's good. And they're playing on the gullibility of lesbians, gays and bisexual people who think that the TQ plus refers to their friends who happen to like a dress when they go out on a Friday. That's it. It's all about gullibility. Um, there you go. I can't, it's just unbelievable. All sex with six year old, for a six-year-old. What? Unbelievable. But that's the way, that's the state of the world, good peeps. Beep, beep, beep.
So give us some comments. Let the jests know where you are with all this, because I think uh, we need to keep talking, keep having the conversations. I'll speak to you later. Have a fun day. Bye.